I'm Ron Donaire, CEO of Intuzi, and I have with me today Ben Hart, VP of Business Intelligence and Innovation for X Agency, a company that supercharges your e-commerce brand, driving ROI and revenue using data-driven decision-making. Uh, you'll remember that I actually interviewed Darwin Liu, CEO of this organization, and I think Ben's take is going to be awesome. It's going to be a little bit different. Ben, welcome to the Data Deep Dive. Ron, thanks for having me. And thanks for interviewing Darwin, too. That's yeah, cool absolutely. We, you know, you guys are doing some pretty interesting things over there. So um, yeah. why don't you just tell us a little bit about what you're working on? Sure. So in my lane, for instance, um, you know, you probably got the big picture from Darwin. And my lane is really what's next. Oh, and for our clients, but also in the big picture, what consumers are doing, right? And so that's the innovation side, but also the business intelligence side. Hey, if TikTok gets banned, where are the uh, consumers 18 to 24 going to go up platforms, right? Um, also just bringing in more competitive data, more uh, downstream data than what we used to do. And that's the business intelligence side. You know, for a long time, we were the, that's definitely that Google, Facebook, now Meta shop. Here's your return on ad spend. Here are the amount of transactions, e-commerce based. Beyond that, now looking at the consumer data, doing CDP work, um, and really segmenting and figuring out one, where we can really get downstream data to inform upper stream, but also just give the clients some good, either market information or trend information or sort of the crystal ball information to say, hey, here's where we think things are going to go next. Here's the data to support that. And here's the initiatives we should take to go for that. Uh, and then on the innovation side is always, you know, looking for the next big thing. Uh, where are those 18, 24 year olds going? Where are the 25 to 34 year olds going? And what markets is that changing in America versus South America versus Europe versus Australia versus uh, Asia, et cetera. And then also that's an external client factor internally. What innovations can we use internally to make our uh, processes better? better serve our clients, make us more efficient. Well, if you can tell me where all the users of TikTok are going to go once that thing gets banned, you let me know in advance and I'm going to make sure that I uh, make some adjustments to my portfolio before that happens. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I mean, there have been studies recently and to give you a ballpark of and and we're this is a conversation I have with clients regularly where we have the TikTok conversation and then where do they go. The interesting thing that's happening if we want to take that for a moment with influencers is they are already thinking ahead and, and maybe voluntarily or involuntarily syndicating their content across Instagram and, and mm -hmm. YouTube shorts. Right. And those are the two, if you do, you know, there was a recent Pew study about this that basically, uh, and I'm going to cheat in because I have the notes because I've been using a lot, the 34% of 18 to 24 year olds and 28% of 35 to 34 year olds would go to Instagram because wow. it's the, the closest analog, that discrepancy between the 18 to 24 and 25 to 34, the 25 to 34 more would go to YouTube shorts. So very cool. Good old, uh, good old meta and uh, alphabet. Or, All right. Go, right. go along, on, go along on, on meta and uh, alphabet. All right. I, I, I hear yeah, you. Especially with the there. congressional hearings this week. I don't know if you saw them at all. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, those this super, might actually happen. You yeah, know, those are super interesting. <laughs> yeah, artificial market source or forces. You wouldn't normally get that. But if some, if the government's going to ban a whole platform, that's the next, that's the next leap run. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, all right. So I like, these conversations to be, uh, you know, very story driven, right? Uh, sure. I think that that kind of translates well. People can start to understand kind of what X agency does. I'd love to hear a story from you about how, you know, you leverage some data to improve a client's ROI or understanding or insights. Um, get as specific as possible, obviously, without getting, you know, without getting in trouble or anything like that. Uh, but uh, it would be great to understand how, uh, an organization can come to X agency and say, all right, well, help me out. Yeah, sure. So it really goes beyond, like I mentioned at the top, it goes into the downstream data as far as we can go. It goes beyond just, hey, here's what Google Analytics says. Mm -hmm. uh, here is your, your amount of transactions and your return on ad spend, which, you know, in performance marketing and e-commerce, we're very much tied to. Um, and 
I would say that's also shifted recently with the way the economy is, right? The economic downturn that's happened in certain segments, um, people aren't buying and shopping as much. So a, a story for you, or at least a use case for you that's happening is really using uh, lead generation, new customer acquisition mm -hmm. tied with, um, you know, let's stealing from competitors, let's be honest, right? Um, and, and showing the downstream effect of that, the, the return on investment later on, right? Because we have these new customers, we don't have a true lifetime value of them yet, right. but using some tools beyond just, Hey, Google analytics, let's look at the customer data. Let's look at the first purchase they came in on. Let's correlate that back, uh, to the campaigns and dedicated campaigns we were running in Google, uh, mm -hmm. is giving us new mechanisms to do that. Facebook is doing that, but also, of course, our other social platforms, even organic social. Uh, but tying that all to the specific customer, because, you know, we're all about first party data, especially in the whole cookie list, iOS, post iOS 14 world. Yeah. And so what that what I've been able to do for our clients and our clients who who are willing to be more aggressive is a lot of their their uh competitors are pulling back on spend right now the economy's mm -hmm. down sales are down let's pull back right and for our uh forward thinking clients this is a time to be aggressive and steal new customers and bring sure. that in and so a really great example of that is one of our largest apparel clients running you wouldn't normally run sort of new customer focused lead generation acquisition campaigns for an e-commerce company you're usually running high level brand awareness, and then you usually running mid to lower funnel capture purchase sort of conversion based campaigns, right? So a cool thing that's happening with one of our clients is, hey, let's run these lead gen focused, new customer acquisition focused campaigns. They were having customers drop off due to competitors before. They're now winning that back mm -hmm. in, in a positive ROAS that's above a 3X. So wow. not only are they grabbing these new customers, they're grabbing them at a 3x return. It's not like a one-to-one -one or a 0.1 right. or a 0.9. Uh, and so they're super excited about that. And they're throwing even more money into it because number one, they're already getting a return on investment. Number two, they're getting new clients or stealing them back from their competitors. And number three, we're already seeing a super high conversion rate from that over 90% of all of those leads in, in a 90-day period. And some of those are becoming their highest 90 percentile uh, customers in terms of uh, purchases and spend. So while in the short term, they're making that investment, they're already showing to them and their investors, we're grabbing new customers in a downturn. Even if our sales are down, we know that these folks, our new customers are going to come back more. And if we can't show the sales, we're about to show that in a maybe 90 day period. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's that's super super interesting. I mean, we do have something very very similar at Intuzi, right? So we have it, you know it's kind of like a co competitive conquesting program, right? Like you yeah. you identify behaviors uh, based on kind of like the data that you have at hand. What we have is geospatial data, right? Data mm -hmm. of, of of people moving around in the real world. And, you know, whether you're an e-commerce brand or you're a physical location that's selling like a physical product, people who exist in the real world and being able to identify what they're doing at your competitors. So like if I'm selling an online mattress because I'm like a Casper, people go to regular mattress stores, right? Like they're at my competitor. That's where I'm either going to get a dollar on my website or they're going to get a dollar in their physical store. So uh, trying to understand, you know, who's there, what they're doing and making sure that, that that brand dollar comes to me and not the my competitor is really the end goal. And that hyper localization um, is very similar to what you're describing in the in kind of like a like a like a like a hyper target of uh, of, of competitive consumers. And you know you you, you can increase spend, increase uh, ROAS, while at the same time all of your other uh, competitors are actually having to pull back because their generalized marketing isn't isn't working. So that's that's really really interesting. 
Um, and so we're on the subject of paid social, right? Like, so we're, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about, um, you know, com, you know, you know, generating leads, generating sales, looking at lifetime value, very something similar. Um, and you mentioned this uh, in a previous comment about how uh, Facebook uh, and, you know, iOS 14 cook, cookie list uh, marketing is, is, is kind of, is, is upon us basically. Um, so tracking is becoming harder. And with the deprecation of the cookie, a lot of kind of traditional tracking mechanisms are being deprecated and you have to kind of shift to a different uh, mode of um, analysis and uh, whether it be a mixed media model or something along those lines. How do you guide your clients through this transition? It's been a, it's been a, a tough one, you know, because they were so hooked on for a number of years, the Google Analytics data being fairly, being relatively accurate, especially in parity with what you're seeing in Facebook, for instance, right now that's way out of whack. Um, I will say, and we're, we're doing this as of late March, 2023, just to put a timestamp on it, GA4 is helping with that a bit, uh, but really it was, since then, it's been, you know, it's been a year and a half, two years since really there were, I was 14 and then 15, four took, an, you know, took another chunk out of it. There were, you could definitely see the stair step down. It's modeling. Um, and there are some solutions out there that do the AI modeling. It's modeling that for clients, whether that's taking the data and saying, oh, here's what it was before. Here's where the channel attributions were before. Here's where they are after. Here's where we think it's going. Uh, it is a bit of a best guess and a trust us thing mm -hmm. with the client. That's where we're saying, here's our here's our rough formula and here's where we're modeling it. Uh, and so here's what we think you are getting back on Facebook. Uh, but it is it is that black box. Obviously there's the server side API that helps with that somewhat. And there are third party um, tracking pixels that yep. will also do that sort of data blending and use some amount of AI to inform that. So that's been a work in progress of depending on the client and how much resources we can put towards the high level tracking versus, you know, these are guys are a little smaller, so we're going to give them a good formula mm -hmm. and say, trust us. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's understanding where, if, you know, the analytics are, it's, it's blank here or lower here, where is it coming out in the other parts of the data, correlating that back and sending it back uh, to the client. So it, it is a black box at this point. It's getting better with GA4. It's also getting better, I think, with AI modeling. And I don't think it's going to go away. I think it's going to get even more opaque. Right. Especially, I mean, let's let's be honest. The whole move by Apple, which was a genius move, there's no new ways to market a smartphone. It's the same as, you know, all the feature set, they're, they're saying our camera looks better, right? That's not right. ways to do it. So Apple in a very smart move and, and a, a move I do appreciate as a consumer, not as a marketer, but... The privacy first thing was a great marketing move. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they're going to hold on to that for dear life. And that's not going to go away. And we just, we will need to be, and obviously Google taking cookies out of Chrome, et cetera. We are going to use the first party data, UTM parameters. It's really funny, are super old school, but still end up being somewhat reliable. Yeah. More so, it does really remind me, I've been in the industry long enough to watch, to remember you know, paid advertising at the beginning, even on Facebook, where we were getting like uh, spreadsheets from Facebook with really limited data. And that was our only thing that we could use sure. yeah. to optimize to where we had the whole cookies and the pixel, the Facebook pixel, especially was doing tinfoil hat stuff to track people, you know, uh, which has been uh, since rolled back. Uh, but I remember early on, I mean, we're sort of going back to tactics that we did before that. Right. Uh, uh, a larger uh, calculation in terms of MER or in terms of, you know, what's our marketing mix and how are we getting our ROI out of that? So um, we're always looking for ways and I'm currently, I have a little innovation team here mm -hmm. and we are exploring platforms that are either combined of the shopping platform uh, and doing some AI around that or a third party or, you know, another pixel that's, doing those data combinations and, and putting them back. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank, well, th thank you for that, that, that explanation. Yeah. Um, so uh, let me, let me ask, uh, do you use uh chat GPT in your, in your practice right now? You do? Oh yeah. Oh, well, wonderful. So um, 
Uh, so it, it, it's, a, it's an amazing tool. I, I, you know, I, and I've seen people use it in a variety of ways. I'd love to hear kind of like how you're utilizing it. And if possible, maybe share some of the prompts that, uh, they, you know, that you use uh, to kind of like get the most out of chat GPT. Because I know that sometimes it's, you know, you got to make sure you get very super specific to get to get something good out of it. So um, what, what do you think would be the, 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 the best prompts to use and, and a, an example of how you're using it? Sure. I almost don't want to give away too much because, our, you know, like we're in the marketing where co competitors are out there. Right. And it, yeah. it is a competitive advantage at this point to be very clear. Um, we've actually had really great results uh, with chat GPT and generative AI in general uh, using that. And then um, we have a paid service we use as well. Uh, but chat GPT in and of itself is doing some pretty amazing stuff and really changing our workflows, depending on where you are but we've done some pretty slick stuff in terms of so i've i've used it and the team has you have used it we're pretty forward thinking our team and i and and darwin the ceo is that kind of way he's a tinkerer uh ceo he's a hands-on kind of guy he's not a high level you know uh big leather chair kind of yeah. uh, ceo right um and so i think that that does permeate through the rest of the organization that said, we've used it for, I mean, I've used it honestly to generate a whole piece of content that was a step-by-step -step how to use a product that I had no idea how to use it. <laughs> Amazing. And I was like, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to fold in some actual, like the, the actual client's product information, you know, and yeah. use our product for blah, 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 and send it over. And they're like, we're going to have our product guy look at this. And then it, you know, the, the email came back of like the notification, hey, they left some comments. They left one comment. It was one sentence that was, hey, could you also say that our product does it in this line also? But everything <laughs> else. That's amazing. For, it was like maybe a 600 word content piece. Wow. And it was a very specific thing, application for a very specific product that ChatGPT just generated. Don't tell the client. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah. there's that side of it. We're using it as prompts for, you know, sometimes for ad copy. Mm -hmm. For the cool thing that one of our uh, folks has used, and I've used it for a little bit too, is the integration into Google Sheets. Okay. And using natural language to tell it to do formulas in Google Sheets, number one. Or number two, you can tell it, hey, here's our list of keywords. Here's the landing page. Generate some SEO descriptions wow. in 140 characters that uh for each one of these pages using these keywords and bleep blah bloop it's it we're not gonna you know we're not gonna fire our content person anytime soon. Right. yeah yeah There's it's, still, a, good, it's still, a good starting but, point for your content person to really just refine and like i find that it like it gets you 85 percent of the way there right yes. and if you're yes. a subject matter expert that extra 15 percent gets you 100 percent there but like yeah being able to take that subject matter expert and reduce the workload to just 15% allows them to do like six times the amount of work in the, uh, in the same time. You're taking a week's worth of work and compressing it into a day. And yeah. all of a sudden you're just, you're firing things off at a much higher rate. I think people who leverage this type of generative AI is going to come out in multiples of work more than, uh, than someone who is just saying, no, I just, I'm not going to use it. It's going to be just me and my keyboard. Um, right. And they're just going to be left behind. You know, I think that's I think, where it goes. Yeah. And I, the, to take that out further, because I'm always thinking ahead and what's the ramifications and the future, right? Um, to take that out further, I do see, especially in the code space, mm -hmm. it's going to, it's going to take out your average code head who's, you know, the manager says, Build me a block of code that does this. Yeah. Right. You can tell Chat Chat GPT to do that. And beyond that, I do think that, you know, folks like us who, if you can see a bigger picture, if you under, I can play editor. I can write a piece of content if I really, really need to. I wrote plenty of college papers. Sure. Got A's on them. You know that kind of thing, right? Yeah. But if to your point, and I, what I've seen and what I've been saying is, it gets you eighty-five to ninety percent of the way there. If you can play editor you're suddenly a one man band or one person band right. you're sort of the wizard of oz who's the pulling all the levers yeah, absolutely all the things happen. hanging on the drums you're pulling the the you know the, 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 the tuning horn yeah it's yeah it's so for for those of us who can maybe big picture and do a few things 
it's going to be really, really beneficial mm -hmm. for that person who is either the one trick pony. It, it, it could be really tough for them in the future. Yeah, in terms that's of a, it's definitely uh, a, a call to be uh, to, to expand skill sets, uh, yeah. you know, refine skill sets. I mean, I think there will be jobs specific to generative AI. I think like there's there is a field of people who are going to do it really, really well. And they're going to be the ones that kind of like help leapfrog organizations and transform organizations into this new space. So um, awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that that is all the time we have today. Uh, but uh, it's been super informative. Let me know how uh, we can let other people uh, know. Let me rephrase this one more time. We'll add that part down. Uh, if a viewer wanted to get in uh, touch with you and engage with you, what's the best way of doing so? Uh, you certainly xagency.com. Um, is the best way to go there. You know, you can email me, you can get in contact on that. Also on LinkedIn, pretty easy to find Ben Hart. Um, so those are probably the best ways to go at this point in the virtual world. No one has sure. business cards anymore. And uh, even telephone numbers are sort of defunct. So xagency.com or Ben Hart on LinkedIn, either one of those, you're going to be able to get in touch pretty quick. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time today, Ben. I really appreciate it. Yeah. That is a wrap. Join us again next week for another informative session on the Data Deep Dive. Thanks, Ron.